people are dying at the rate of 300 a day. And so I can certainly understand the high level of anxiety that would exist in Italy and, and in many countries are, are across Europe, um, as, as is regularly conveyed to me. Um, and so they have some real difficulties there. They are in a, an, an unbridled crisis situation. That is not the situation in Australia. But nevertheless, we've been able to secure our supplies. Let's speak to Bernd Lange now. He's an MEP for Germany's Social Democrats and chairs the European Parliament's Committee on Foreign Trade. Mr Lange, thanks for speaking to DW today. Tell me, does Italy have the EU support on this decision? Uh, the support by the European Commission, but uh, not in general the support, because I think the instrument, expert control and expert ban, is not the right instrument to solve the problem with a single company. And of course, as you mentioned in your report, there is a problem with AstraZeneca because they are not sticking to the obligation of the contract. You've already voiced an opinion on the export ban. In a recent tweet, you called the move a mistake and said a, quote, Pandora's box was opened. So are you concerned that the European Union could be triggering a protectionist vaccine war here? Indeed, that's a big risk. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have a problem with one company, but we use an instrument which has triggered all companies and the whole world. And of course, we have reaction, for example, from several countries in Latin America asking what's going on in Europe. On the one hand, you are asking in the WTO to reduce tariffs and cut down non-tariff barriers. And at the same moment, you establish a protective measures inside the European Union. This, not, this is not fitting together. And they are right. I think this is the excuse of course, for other countries to establish similar protective measures. With vaccine rollouts in the EU having been comparatively slow, doesn't it make sense, though, for governments to prevent vaccines leaving EU territory? No, we are living in an open world. And of course, we have also some supply of vaccine coming from outside the European Union. And you can easily argue why should they supply for vaccine which is used inside the European Union. No, it's a global problem and we need a global solution and vaccine against corona should be a public good. And uh, it's totally not acceptable if we have a contract with a single company and they are not fulfilling the obligation, uh, regardless where the company is based and regardless to which nation this uh, uh, vaccine should go. We have to stick to the principle if there's a contract concluded, then, of course, both partners have to stick to the obligation. What will you suggest governments do, though, to overcome these vaccine shortages? We need more production capacity. That's true. And perhaps this was also a fault in the vaccine strategy of the European Union. We invest in the research, in the uh, yeah, preparation of the production, but we didn't invest in the production capacity. And of course, it's not so easy to produce this modern kind of vaccine, and uh, we need more capacity. And uh, now the European Commission established a task force under the Industrial Commissi uh, Commissioner, Mr. Breton, to establish exactly this uh, procedure to uh, go for more production capacity. And I think we should really go for a little bit more pressure to the companies to allow other companies, partner companies, to use the patents and the technical know-how to establish more production capacity. All right, Bernd Lange of the European Parliament's International Trade Committee, thank you very much for your time.